Uh, good morning. If you are seeing this, you know, I thought I was going to go live on Wednesday morning, and then I just had an experience that happened on Monday afternoon, and I thought, you know what? I'm not going to rush this. I'm not going to push this, and so it inspired me to um, record the show for you. So thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Kevin Gregg, the host of this show. Um, I guess I'm diving sort of right into the Catholic part of this, the Catholic uh, viewpoint that I have. Um, Monday afternoon, let, let me give you a little background before we get into this. Um, practicing Catholic, longer story, which I will share over time um, with viewers and listeners of the show. Um, but we just went through the season of Lent. Uh, Lent encapsulates the 40 days. It commemorates the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert. It's all a, t it's all a time of preparation before we get to Easter, right? We celebrate different seasons in the church. One of the hallmarks or, or the facets of Lent is it's a time of prayer, um, fasting, almsgiving. Uh, it's, it's time of reflection, right? I think it's good for us to do this uh, in different periods of our life. If you are not a religious person, you have these moments where you go, ah, things just feel a little bit out of whack for me. Um, let me get on an exercise program, or maybe I'll do something different or change something different. Um, again, this is the layman's version of this, uh, but that's exactly what Lent is. Lent is one of those seasons where you go, okay, we've got this big celebration that's coming up in the church, which is the celebration of Christ's resurrection, which is basically um, the true miracle of the church. And before we get to that point, instead of just taking everything for granted, we go through this season of reflection, which is like, hey, let me take a look at stuff that's been going on in my life. Where are areas where I can grow deeper in my relationship with God? Where's areas where I've been getting stuff wrong? Um, where can I improve? Whatever. For those of you that are familiar with uh, Lent, you know, it's a classic thing that you see happen with kids of just like, well, I gave up candy for Lent or I gave up soda for Lent. Um, there was always sort of a, a punitive thing that's involved with it. Uh, and and that's, not, that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Sometimes uh, as we're going through this transformation, this reflection, sometimes we have to go through painful change. Again, the example with diet exercise. If we're doing something where we're trying to make a change or transformation, all of a sudden we've, you know, taken out flour or sugar from the diet, or we're doing exercise on a regular basis, and there's a little bit of pain and discipline that goes with that. Um, those are really broad strokes about Lent. I give all of that as the preface for this. Uh, I had a terrible Lent. I had a terrible Lent. Um, this is not an excuse session at all. Um, but the last year with COVID has been really challenging. Uh, the church that I go to, I go to St. Charles Borromeo in Studio City. Um, and, you know, once that, once COVID and lockdown restrictions and everything happened in our city, um, it's hard, right? Like all of a sudden you're out of that community. Uh, uh, I'm a Eucharistic minister at church couldn't be going there on a regular basis. It was all of this stuff hit last year during the Lenten season. And, you know, our first Easter that we went through that we didn't have church. This was all last year in 2020. As a result of this, there's been a lot of like, you know, people going to online masses or, uh, you know, our church got very innovative. Uh, our main pastor there, Father Jose, he ended up implementing uh, like drive-in masses that you could do, uh, even special drive-in communion services that you could go to so that you're partaking of it in mass, but then you have the ability to be able to actually receive the Eucharist in person. Anyway, regardless, um, I, just had a, I, I had a bad Lent, right? And what I mean by that is, um, you know, I, my relationship with, with be transparent here on a thing, uh, had sort of a desert moment, a desert period with my relationship with God, right? Where it's 
it's sort of like an active turning away that's been happening with me. I know things that I can do in order to deepen my relationship with God, things that have helped me in the past. Um, I need that structure. You know, I've realized here I am 48 years old. If there's something that's really helped me in my life is having a consistent structure. And there's actually structures that were in place the last couple of months that actually ha helped me through this season, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, but with that said, there were things I was hoping to do this Lent that I just didn't get to. And sometimes you can do positive things during the Lenten season. This Lenten season, it was a hope for me to go, hey, you know what? I need to make sure that I'm setting correct boundaries in my life and uh, and making the proper distinction between work stuff and then my family and relationship stuff and refreshment time. Um, it's a thing I constantly struggle with. I'm always one of those, what's next? Let's go, go, go. What's the next thing I can do? What's the next thing I can do? Because I deal with control issues. I deal with these issues where, you know, I think if I just do everything, if I do everything that I can, I'm going to make this stuff happen. And I've learned this time and time again over the years that <laughs> Something I learned earlier in my my acting career was that just because you do A, B, C, and D doesn't mean you get E, F, G, and H. You just don't. It doesn't happen. How many times have I seen it where people have done just like – I thought that there was a specific order that was supposed to happen. If I do these things correctly, then I will get all these results correctly. And life just isn't that, right? My friend Bonnie Utley has described it like this, which is like you know, it's not it's – not, heading up. Life isn't one of these things where I go, now I do this and now we just keep going up. No, life is more like this crazy zigzag wiggle as we're going all the way up. Anyway, all that to say, I was hoping that I was going to do something really positive for Lent, um, for myself, for my family this year. And um, that didn't happen. Like I got very consumed and focused on remote work and some contracts and some other freelancing work that I've been doing um, and just getting caught up in my own junk, feeling like I was just burning the candle on both ends, not getting the type of rest that I committed to. And, and honestly, getting to a point several times during this season where I just went, I, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to pray. I don't want to read the Bible. Uh, I don't want to attend online mass. And it was just like this it was this active turning away, right? Like that's ultimately what sin is. Sin comes from the term, I don't know if it's a Greek term or not, but sin actually comes from an archery term, right? And you'll see this in math, right? The sin, S-I-N. Um, but what sin really means is it's an archery term, which means that we miss the mark, right? The idea is that we're trying to aim towards something. God's calling us towards something. God's calling us towards us becoming the best versions of ourselves for his purpose, for the thing that he's trying to do with the world and with each other in relationship with each other. And sin are those moments where it's not even like, in my situation, it's not even like I'm, I'm actively pointing away from the, from the target. It's like I'm turning all the way around and shooting completely the opposite way and just going, I don't want to do that at all. And that was the season that I felt. Um, anyway, we have this thing, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, the Catholic faith, we have sacraments. Won't get into unpacking all that stuff, but we have the sacrament of, you may have heard it before, it's confession, or the sacrament of reconciliation. And ultimately what that is, is that's an opportunity for you to take this moment of self-reflection. They have these moments where you've missed the mark, where you've, you know, where you've sinned, where you've gone the opposite way. And it's an active recognition of like going, you know what? That's not working for me. I want to get back in relationship with God. I want to get back on the right track. Um, and confession gives you an opportunity to do that. I know they've got other, you know, friends, brothers, and sisters that are in different Christian denominations, and they have versions of this, right? Um, Actually, on the, the show Your Creative Journey the other day, I had uh, Mark Clayman, who's a friend of mine, who's also uh, the producer of this show called The Apology Line. I won't go into the 
details of it, but if you get a chance to look up your creative journey podcast and go to the Mark Clayman episode, um, but he talks about this uh, podcast where people saw these little signs that were up in public that were saying, hey, do you have something that's on your heart that you want to confess? And people would call this number and leave messages. And in that in that podcast, he talks about how um, uh, one of the pitches that he used with producers was saying was telling producers about how confession is good for confession is good for the soul, um, and then scripturally, it's not only about confessing your sins to God, but it's also about confessing your sins to each other. And there's something super powerful about that full transparency i've gone through recovery programs for myself and this is actually a part of the process that you go through um when you're going through this uh you go through a process with your sponsor where you have this moment where you're talking about all of these past things that you've done where you've messed up in your life and you have a moment with your sponsor where do you talk about these things openly like any safe place, that's why you have to make sure that you've got someone that you absolutely trust. I'll get back to the correlation with the Catholic priest in a moment. But you have a moment where you're with someone in person and you're talking about the junk that you've done, where you've gotten it wrong, the deepest, darkest, the problems, the issues, all the stuff that you're going through. And you're doing it in a safe environment with someone who's not judging you right? Someone is literally there just to be basically a, well, sort of a vessel and almost like a conduit or almost a representation of Christ. It's the physical act of doing, yes, we could do this stuff where we go off on our own, that we can confess our sins to God. And I totally get that, right? That's it. But there's something powerful when you're actually facing another human being face to face, and you're talking about where you got it wrong, where you got it wrong. Because there's a version of humility, transparency. I don't like using the word vulnerability. I feel like it gets way overused. The, the definition and concept of it is right on the nose. That's just my own personal pet peeve. But, you know, again, that vulnerability is an important thing. But you just have this moment where you're just kind of laying it out. I think that that's the thing that's so important with the Christian faith, the Catholic faith, the Christian faith in, in general. I've talked about this before in, in other aspects. The interesting thing about our, our faith, the Christian faith, is it's one of the beliefs where it's not about being perfect when you're approaching your maker, the creator of all. That exists in some other denominated that exists in some other uh, faith belief systems where it's like you can't approach the holy stuff you can't approach god you can't approach the highest being without being perfect before you do that christianity isn't that christianity is literally i'm broken i'm broken and i'm putting myself on the altar and i'm just saying i can't do this i can't do this i need your help Alan Arnold, who wrote, is it the story of with? I'll have to double check it. My apologies if I got it wrong. I could look it up right now while I'm talking to you guys. Story of with. I think that's it. I'll look it up for a second. But Alan Arnold talks about this great thing. And I talked to uh, James Arnold Taylor on my other show. Um, let me look him up real quick. Alan Arnold. Alan Arnold. Um, he's got this fantastic, yes, that's it. The story of with a better way to live, love, and create. Um, he's got this wonderful analogy that happens in this book, which is the idea of, I think it's a, I, I feel as if it's a Japanese art. Um, I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments. Um, but it's the idea of taking like a, a piece of glass or a glass vase or something like that. And what, the, what they do is they let it drop to the ground, and then it breaks, and it shatters. And whenever something shatters, it shatters into a million pieces. Not a million pieces, but it just 
they they try not to shatter it so it gets completely destroyed, but they do it in a way where it cracks and it breaks into these different pieces. When that cracking happens, it's very unique. So there's an art where then they'll take gold, they'll take you know heated liquid gold and then they'll solder all of the glass pieces back together. And so you have these veins of gold that are running through this vase and it's unique. No two pieces of art are the same. And now it's even more valuable because of two things. Number one, because of the uniqueness of it, no two vases are put back together the same. And now it has all of this gold that's running through it too, that makes it more valuable. And I think that that's what God's trying to do with it. That's what Christ is trying to do with us through confession, through confession, through reconciliation. He's having this moment where he's saying, come back, come back. You're not going to be perfect, but I'm going to help bind you together so that you forward and do more. Um, and I don't know. I think that there is something about that humility. Again, I'll use the word vulnerability. That humility, that vulnerability, um, just that transparency of going, I get it wrong. I get it wrong. And I need your help, God, to do this. Um, and I think it's a powerful thing for us to recognize is that um, God's able to do that with us. And then it's the idea of having that mercy towards other people. Um, even as frustrating as you can get. It's one of the biggest challenges. It's sort of one of the biggest challenges. I'll just touch on this briefly, not to go too far down this path. But I think it's one of the biggest problems that we're facing today with our, with cancel culture that's out there, which is that people that are making mistakes, and it's not it's not called cancel culture to everybody. For some people, they they refer to it as like it's an accountability culture, right? But there's a difference between holding people accountable for what they've done, for the actions that they've done, and then there's a difference between that and then also having mercy towards other people and recognizing that people change. This is not an excuse. This is not an excuse for terrible criminal behaviors, things where you know people are assaulted, assaulted, or people get away with stuff, but. We have to look at the we have to look at the human heart. You know. And we have to have a um, mercy towards people and how can we help people and how can we not only there's something that can happen with the transformation and somebody coming out and saying, you know what, I'm genuinely sorry for what I've done. And then there's something that we have to do where we have to follow the model of Christ and we have to follow the model of God of saying, okay, get up. Let's keep going. Let's start new. I've always referred to it in a number of uh, uh, groups that I've been in. <laughs> I always refer to uh, Christ as like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator 2. When the Terminator busts into that uh, asylum that Linda Hamilton's in and she sees the Terminator and she's freaking out and she slides on the floor. And they used it for the trailer. You can see it, but he literally leans down and he sticks out his hand and goes, come with me if you want to live. And I think that that's what Christ is doing with us on a continual basis. Like he's literally reaching out his hand and he's saying, even though we've fallen, he's saying, come with me if you want to live. Let's go. Grab my hand. Let's get up and let's go again. Anyway, those are my thoughts I want to share on, on confession, sacrament of reconciliation. It's the reason why I'm pre-recorded this so that you can see it on Wednesday morning because I ended up just having just a powerful um, confession with my with my local priest, and it was uh, it was super healing. Uh, and I remember getting back to the house, and even my wife Kate just said, "Like I just had just peace on my face, you know, because it was just this. It was true. It was true reconciliation with God." It felt like true reconciliation with God, and we just had a great, 
great evening where we kind of hung out together. We prayed. We were able to just have some very special moments with each other. We even watched a few of those uh, uh, those Ted Lasso uh, episodes on Apple TV. Fantastic show. I'm just going to throw it out there. Uh, Jason Sudeikis, man. Dynamite. Wonderful, wonderful show. Looking forward to it. I'm about three episodes in. Um, but anyway, I want to share that with you because the you know our priests then share with us that they're um, fortunately they have a thing that happens during the week where they're able to have some in person masses because it's a smaller group of people and they're able to do it outside on the little piazza that they have at the church. So uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with my son Duncan. Uh, 8 a.m. on Wednesday morning. So I normally try to do. If I'm doing one of these live, it's going to be at 7:30 a.m. And I thought, ah, I don't want to. I don't want to push it. I don't have to scramble to finish this and then get out the door and get there. So um, anyway, there you go. I just wanted to share that. Confession is good for the soul. Um, and there are great elements of it. Again, I'm a novice in all this stuff. You want to look up some powerful stuff? Take a look at uh, Father Mike Schmitz. You'll find him online. He does a thing, uh, Catholic Bible in one year. It's on Apple Podcasts. But Look up Father Father Mike Schmitz. He's with, uh, I think it's like Ascension Productions online. Um, check him out. He's got some great, he's got some great videos that are about um, confession and the power of confession. And, uh, you know, he's out of Duluth, Minnesota. Did I get that right? I may have gotten it right. I don't know. Um, but check him out. Anyway, that's what I want to share with you today. Uh God willing, I should be back. Uh, for, well, I will be back Friday morning regardless. I think it's going to be a live show. Um, thanks for being here. Just as I'm in the beginning stages of this and uh, expanding on it. It might be a little bit all over the place the first few times. That's okay. I'm trying to get my uh, trying to get my feet solid and steady as I figure out what this is. But I'm really looking forward to this journey. All right. We'll see you back again. Friday, 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.